Sorry, Calvin slept in my bed last night. He came into my room and said, Mama, Mama, I have to sleep in your bed. I had the worst nightmare ever. Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to talk about fact fluency. More specifically, I'm going to share three ideas and activities that you can use in your classroom to help students improve their own fact fluency so they can remember those math facts in a snap. If you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. And if not, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher, currently getting my master's degree in curriculum and instruction from Boston University. And in the meantime, while I'm doing that, I spend a lot of time here on YouTube making videos like this for teachers like you. My videos are always geared towards kindergarten, first and second grade teachers, and I like to make them pretty easy to digest so you can take these ideas and use them in your classroom right away. So if you're ready to hear these tips, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Naturally, in kindergarten, first, and second grade classrooms, a lot of our math practice is going to be tactile and hands-on. This is because students are just learning these skills, and we always want them to have a vast understanding of what these skills and concepts really mean, instead of just having them memorize their math facts. So while we do want them to recall those math facts, you know, in a snap, they're not just memorizing three plus three without actually knowing what it means. In fact, they should have a deep understanding of what three plus three means, and then they're just recalling the answer to that question very quickly. That being said, we do want our students to actually recall those math facts without, you know, kneading their fingers or cubes or other manipulatives. We want them to recall it very quickly, like I said, in a snap, because when they're able to do that, they actually free up so much more cognitive space so they can build upon and learn other skills and new concepts. So knowing this information, I'm going to share three easy ways that you can help your students practice their fact fluency. Tip number one is to implement fluency practice often. Students are going to come into your classroom at all different levels, so you don't want to wait until all of your students have mastered basic addition to start teaching them to remember these facts a little more quickly. Instead, you want to expose them to these fact fluency practices often, and here's a few ways you can do that. One simple way to do this is through a math warm-up. Now, you can do this either whole group or small group, and essentially you'll just write three or four different addition or subtraction equations on the board Board. and when students come over either to the rug for a whole group meeting or to a small group, you can put it on a small whiteboard or just on a piece of paper, while you are getting everything ready and you're coming over to the carpet, you can tell them to go ahead and practice those problems. Now, I love this too because it's an easy way to kind of see what students are able to look at the problems and just know the answer in their head, what students might be counting on their fingers still, and what students are just looking at those equations like, I don't know how to solve it. So it lets you check in and see where students are at. It's also just a really simple way to get their minds moving and getting ready to learn whatever math skill you're about to teach them or review with them. To relate this to literacy, I did a video last month about how to teach CVC words. And in that, one of the first steps I do when pulling students over to a small group is they will have a little alphabet fluency square, it looks like this, and they will just have that there. And before I even get to the table, students know to go and simply point to each letter and say the letter name and letter sound. It just reviews some old skills and gets them ready to learn. In a similar way for math, when students are either coming over to the rug or they're going to that small group, they're gonna do the same thing, but they're going to try to practice some quick math facts. Another easy way to implement some fluency practice is to have a number of the day. And you don't have to do this every day, but again, as a warm up, you can simply give students a number, let's say the number nine, and then I just have them separate their paper into four quadrants like this, and they can show four different ways to make that number nine. And lastly, during our calendar or morning meeting time, you may want to throw in some addition and subtraction facts for students to have to solve during their activity portion of that time. All right, idea number two for upping our fact fluency is to have students practice mental math. 
Now in the last tip I shared, you know, students are still able to use their fingers if needed, they're able to draw out representations, and they're just practicing that fluency over and over to get better at it. But here you want to teach students to practice not using anything but their mind. Now I wouldn't put too much of an emphasis on a mental math until you've already taught students some different addition and subtraction strategies. Things like, you know, making tens or counting on, putting the number in your head and counting on or counting back, and even visualizing in our heads. After students have learned those strategies and practiced them with manipulatives, that's when I like to have them practice it with just their minds. And there's a few different ways you can do this. First, I love to use math read-alouds as a way for students to think flexibly about those numbers and while they are able to like look up the pictures on the page and they might be counting there, they're not using things like manipulatives. Some of my favorite for addition include this book right here. Each orange had eight slices and I also love this one, Animals on Board by Stuart J. Murphy. That last book I shared, Animals on Board, that's actually a math start book, and they have a whole line of math read-alouds that are great. So if you need some for skip counting, regrouping, subtraction, addition, check out that line for some great books. Now, another way to practice some mental math is through number talks in the classroom. And I'm not going to go super deep into number talks right now because I actually did a four part video series this past summer. Here are the four videos and they were all on having number talks surrounding number sense. When students have a strong understanding of number sense, they have a really great idea of how numbers can be grouped together and broken apart, which really helps them, again, think flexibly about these numbers and help them with their fact fluency as well. And lastly, for mental math practice, you can have students do some low stakes or even no stakes little drills. So you can just simply print out a an addition sheet. You can find a ton of them online. Just print out a sheet of addition and set a timer for one minute. And students will just see how many they can solve in their head without trying to use their fingers or try to use drawings. They'll see how many they can complete on the sheet. And again, these should be either low stakes or no stakes type of drills where students are really just seeing how many they can solve in a minute and then maybe, you know, a couple weeks later they try again and see if they were able to get even more. They only want to kind of compare amongst themselves and not against the other kids in the class. And idea number three for increasing fact fluency is to use games, games, games. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know I love using games in the classroom because they are such high engagement ways to review skills and addition and subtraction, it's perfect for this. Now, I have a ton of print and play games for kindergarten and first grade. They look like this right here and they actually cover all the different skills. So for example, for a first grade uh, fluency practice game, I love this one right here. It's called Number Crash. And here you can see there's just a game board that students will use and I will use two dice for this. I actually have a two dice and a three dice version, but students will roll the number dice and have to come up with the sum. You can also see in this picture that I like to use uh, number dice and not dot dice. Uh, as a way to differentiate and students will quickly come up with the sum and move their cube their game piece to that number if at any point from start all the way to finish which is that 10 over there if at any point a student lands on the same number as their opponent they both crash and have to move back to start so they're really trying to race to the end and in order to win the game they have to get a sum of 10 to land in the 10 spot Students love that game. I think it's all about the crashing, but it's a great one to practice fact fluency. And here's an example of a kindergarten math one. This one is called Roll, Move, and Color. Here you can see that students will start on different sides of this spiral type game board, and they will simply roll the dice and move that many spots, and they have to solve the addition problem as quick as they can. Once they solve it, they will color in on their side whatever the sum is, one through five, and the first player to color in their whole column there, all the sums, one, two, three, four, and five, is the winner. 
I will go ahead and put the addition and subtraction print and play games for kindergarten and first grade down in the description of this video. That way you can take a look at them, uh, download the preview, and see if your students might like those games. Another math board game I absolutely love is not one of my print and play games, but it is this game right here, Zingo. We have this at home, my boys love it, and one side is just like number sense, students have to match the number to how many images there are, but the other side is actually addition, so they're doing the same thing and it's basically just bingo with a zing. So there you have a bunch of different ideas to increase your own student's fact fluency. Just to reiterate these again, you have number one, implement fluency practice often. Number two, have students practice mental math. And number three, use some fun and engaging games. By using these three simple strategies, your students will be just rock stars at their fact fluency for addition and subtraction in no time. If you have any questions or do you have any other strategies that you love to use with your students to help practice fact fluency, let me know or ask them down in the comment section below. And I always read all my comments, so I will be sure to take a look. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.